taxes win Tell me why you try to hold me back Tugging at my heart Pulling on my sleeve This old guitar You're always up for picking just one more song And if I listen long enough to you I might never leave If I listen long enough Thanks very much. It's a real pleasure to be down here tonight. We are the Titan Valley Warheads. Boy. Heaven bring the instruments and the monitors more. Well, these guys are tuning. Let me plug us. We're out at Little Ebner's Steakhouse every Sunday night from 6 to 9. So come out there and have a steak and enjoy the bluegrass and the western music under the stars. Ready for western? That's North Silver Bell Road, just north of Ina, about 10 miles. Don't throw out. Here we go. Three, two, three. stuff for you. We yanked that out of, oh, I don't know, about three, four weeks ago. Started messing around with it and said, you know, if you just change the words a little, it's a bluegrass song. <laughs>
This is great. This is great. American, oh what a bunch of shit, Nazi propaganda. A little offensive speech to wake you up? Or you could do it just like the red meat cowboy this week. Wake up, have another cup of coffee, do a couple hits of speed, go write your name on a cow with your piss. be something to do. Actually be entertaining. You don't seem enthused. I'm very enthused. Very, very enthused. What what enthuses you? A lot of things right now. Hmm. Well, to any loser who's pathetic enough to be watching this show. I can relate, and, huh? I'm Syphilis, this here is my special guest, Roach. He really did earn the name. No, he's not disease-ridden, at least I don't think so. Are you disease-ridden? I don't know. Oh, you don't know? When was the last time you were to the free clinic? The rabies clinic? About two months ago. What about one of those AIDS places? About three months ago. And they stuck a swab down my dick. Uh, and you've been practicing more than masturbation. Yeah. I'd, I'd say it's time to go and get a checkup. another sign it's time to get up. It's our friendly neighborhood garbage man. I really hope some bum wasn't just sleeping in that dumpster. So he'd probably be hurting right now. Now that was kind of disruptive, wasn't it? <laughs> Bob, what do you think the possibility, chances would be of the garbage man picking up a dumpster with complete trash, bum, and bedroll, throwing it in the back of the truck and compacting it without realizing it? Pretty likely, actually. How many times do you think it happens in a year? Well, I, I wonder things like this. 
twice, twice maybe a year. Twice a year. Mm. Maybe more. Well, it depends on the garbage men. I've seen garbage men who are too intent on what they're doing. I've seen garbage men who have no idea what they're doing. I've seen garbage men who don't give a shit. The funniest garbage man I saw was a garbage man who, for some reason, when I walked by, was raking rubbish into someone's yard from the back of his truck. There, there's very few possible reasons I could think of for that. Possibly ex-fiance demanding more alimony than the poor man makes in a day. Expecting a year's wages in a month. That would be a good reason. Or maybe it was the police chief's house. Who knows? And the police chief either brutalized him, or his sister, or his brother. So he did the honorable thing, just like any kung fu master. Got revenge. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Snap Crackle Pop. If there's anyone watching, I would greatly appreciate it if you could bring me coffee. Coffee jolt. All I need is a caffeinated beverage of some sort. Or if I had something other to drink than light beer. I'd like a lovely bunch of alcohol, do pity do, some Cuervo and some German larger too. I'll drink until I puke, then I'll be rid of you. Oh, I'd like a lovely bunch of alcohol, do pity do, then I wouldn't remember my name. Cause all I want for Christmas is a keg of brew, so I don't remember Christmas Day. Time to make up the Joe. I don't care if you got a hangover. You gotta make up some Joe for yourself. Wake your lazy couch potato ass up. You gotta bring me some coffee. This is your mission in life. This is how you will get to heaven. Now I may sound harsh, but I love you. God loves you, and I love coffee. So if you want to get to heaven, bring me coffee. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Your turn, Bob. I don't have anything to say currently. I plead the fifth. Yeah, I can relate to probably most of the rest of the conscious world right now. Confused, bewildered, and I'm sick of the sun. Doesn't exactly look like a Monday, but it's an early morning, so it's close enough. Anyone who might be watching this show, I think you have serious problems. You need to learn how to sleep until one or two in the afternoon. If you're waking up this early, you're either disturbed, too uptight, or just plain crazy. But as long as you're up, once again I'll stress, if you bring me coffee, I will guarantee you the cutest little condo on the greatest little oceanfront 
in heaven. Start begging for coffee. About a shot of coffee. A shot of coffee. Share a shot of coffee. A shot of coffee helps. A shot of coffee. It's hot. Hot coffee is always the best. Time to rise and shine. Wake up, wake up. Four pots of coffee and you'll feel fine. Wake up, wake up. It's almost seven in the morning. Oh, we have a stranger on the street. What's going on? How much are you doing this morning? Good, good. Wait for my bus. What's going on here? Um, live TV. Really? Right on. <laughs> Right on. Want to say some sort of good morning to Tucson? Yeah, can I? Good morning. There's there's a mic right there. Right on. This is pretty cool, man. A any thoughts for the day? Maybe for any lazy couch potatoes who are yeah, yeah, watching it's, this? It's going to be a good morning. I know that, I guess. That's all I can say. I haven't slept last night, so... Mm. <laughs> That's my only input. I haven't slept. I'm just waiting I, for my I can class. relate to that. I can relate. Just started doing this show, just finished up the new show. That's cool, that's totally cool. Put some, you need some good, uh, I was watching some other show on this cable access, said, uh, there's no input or no, you know right. what I'm saying, people call in and there's nothing well, to it. People walk up on the street, sit down and do a show if they want. Right, right, I'm right on. Phones, though, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, yeah, though. You could set up a temporary phone line or some sort of communication. Yeah, we got a up there, we used to, but they bitched in the front because they were too loud. Uh, that's not good. Well, this is great though. Good start, man. Get y'all going. The new the new show was the new show was pretty good tonight. One year anniversary next week. Really? It's the first time I can think of there was actually a live in alley audience. Do you know what though? I can never I never see any shows like y'all guys. I mean, when I hit the cable access, it's usually something of a menu or. One time Religion I saw two the kids. That's why we started doing it, man. Right. It yeah, it says two. Come the on down. The only <laughs> decent public access show I usually have the chance to watch on a regular basis is that Mr. B. The Mr. B show. Yeah, myself. You know, a couple weeks ago he was showing the doors in the background. Complete and uncensored. Oh, the new ones that are like online or something? Um... I think there's an online show right before him and an online show right after him. Yeah, I see the show with like. But he's two always kids. wearing glasses, and I, I, I swear either this guy's eating a whole hell of a lot of LSD <laughs> in his lifetime, or he's using it as a ritual to go do his show. Hey, this is great, man. Right on, I have more power to you, man. Yeah, Keep at this night up. Till 8 in the morning, man, on Fridays. Not 10 at night till 8 in the morning? Yep. Yeah, like, like I said, I flipped, but I don't see nothing, man, but menus, you know? It's 99, it's morning online. All right, man, good luck to y'all. Okay, thanks, man. <laughs> well, it's nice to hear good input instead of have a passerby run away. I guess maybe, I guess maybe it helps. I washed my hair. I wash my hair more often now. Seems, I don't know. It seems to be when there's leftover glue in it, or it's standing on end. I don't know. I ask for a cigarette, and someone gives me their pack and asks me not to hurt them. I I don't see how I would be intimidating.
I, I guess maybe I just don't get into the power trip or something. Well, no, that would be a lie. Easily controlled. So that, that would be a lie. Sometimes I do get into the power trip. And that's only when I need someone to go away from my own sanity. Hmm. I've got a good idea for a topic here. Ways to make people go away. In fact, I think I'm going to write a book on this. I'm going to see if I can come up with 101 ways to, without fail, make people you do not want to associate with go away. Well, let's see. If there's a gay guy you don't want around, hmm. Hmm. sing him a sloppy second song. First track from Destroyer would be the best bet. Um, for police, there's many things you can do. I found the most effective for me is either between, as soon as they pull me over, start screaming hysterically, I'm not going back, I'm not going back, goddamn woman's throwing television sets at my head, I'm not gonna put up with this no more, I just can't take it, I don't care if I wind up living in a dumpster behind a Circle K, don't even come near me, I don't want to hear it. That, that one's the lesser effective, more effective, is to plop down, sit cross-legged, and start nonchalantly plucking pubic hairs while looking deliriously at absolutely nothing. When the cop walks up to you and asks you, well, what are you doing? Ask him if he has salt, pepper, or ketchup, and if he would like a bite. Either he's going to go away, or he's going to take you to a mental ward. More than likely, he'll just go away. If you want to make a god person go away, some of them are easy, some of them aren't. Some of them just make an idle threat. Oh, but Jesus loves you. Yes, and my fist would love to crack your skull. Then there's the more hard ones. Sometimes you should try to vomit on them. If vomiting doesn't work, and they still want to tell you all about the Lord, then I think the only way you're going to make them go away unless they're both twice as sick as you are, free willing, and be liberated. Someone actually got some good advice. Hmm. Is there any music on this one? Hmm. When, when do you put together the music for each show? Well, I don't. Uh, who puts together the music for the shows? Whatever they want. Everybody does their own stuff. Does it have to be on that kind of cassette? No. Actually, in any day. A cassette, CD player. For a while, but that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think I could bring you a little more variety next week for your anniversary of the new show. Some Zero Boys, some Dayglo abortions, um, some Guttermouth, 
Let's see what else. Some MDC. Well, if I could throw together a group of non-flaking musicians quick enough to do that, I'd do it for you. But, uh, I'm kind of short on even equipment as of right now. The only reason I wasn't worried about it before was my um, bassist, my oh trustworthy, loyal bassist. Brad, who I found out, got pissed on by Mace and cried his ass off. I think it's great. Completely humiliated. He had his rich parents pay for him to have a full set of equipment. PA, drums, bass, guitar, mic stands, whatever he needed. When it actually came time to get up on stage and play a show in front of people, he decided, no, I do not want to bring equipment. No, I'm too scared to play. What if we're not perfect? When you hear him in practice, and he tells you a completely different story. Oh yeah, I, I can go, I can play just for myself and not worry if anyone else is impressed. And I could be playing the most fucked up, non-melodic, non-music sounding song in the whole face of the world with the stupidest lyrics. I don't know, it, both of those comments seem to kind of contradict to me. And I guess maybe it wasn't so much as I was pissed about him shitting out, me not having enough time to improvise, borrowing a couple instruments from the other opening band. And I was supposed to open for the Vandals. I never saw the Vandals. So... If there's anyone who wants to join, don't have to tell anybody, just listen. I'm going to make up for not seeing the Vandals. I'm going to go pay for an Offspring ticket. I'm going to go to the show, I'm going to enjoy watching the Luna Chicks, and I'm going to enjoy watching the Vandals. When Offspring comes on stage, I will conveniently open my backpack, pull out several beer cans sealed, sealed full of rocks and start throwing them at the singer and see how well he remembers me. Then I'm going to laugh hysterically and leave. If you want to join this conspiracy, don't tell anybody. Just in your own secret, private place. If you need to know how to reseal cans, if you have a good concrete floor, turn the can upside down, rub it around until the inside breaks off. You can pop this out. Then you push the tab back after the can's full, pack it back down, and you've got a brand new can. Kids, if your parents ask you where you learned how to do such a thing when you give your brother or sister a concussion it was not my fault I gave you no ideas about throwing beer cans full of rocks at your siblings I don't advise that kind of thing I think it's really fucking amusing but I don't advise it Any curious channel flippers? People actually do pay. For some bastard like me to sit and talk about meaningless crap 
on live TV. But it's got a purpose. It doesn't only confuse you, but it revives you, it energizes you. Because it's time to wake up. What, what time are we pushing now? Uh, 6.46. 6.46. If you're not awake, you better be at least halfway through your coffee pot by now. Bring some back. Mm -hmm. yes, please bring the other half. Any adorable women with big coffee pots, if you bring me coffee, it may not be worth much to you, but if you bring me coffee, I would either love you forever or at least pretend to. I will kiss your feet for coffee. Hmm. Well, what what should be the secret word for today? Okay, the secret word for today, children, is shit. Every time you hear someone use this word in a phrase or a sentence, I want you to jump up and down hysterically on your brother, sisters, mothers, fathers, or anyone who's in the way, on top of their feet hysterically, and scream, scream bloody murder. Don't just scream and laugh insanely. Scream bloody murder. Make the neighbors wonder, oh my god, what is that family doing? I, I bet you they're holding strange satanic rituals with those children. Normal children don't scream like that. Once your parents are done dealing with the cops, then you can be grounded for a whole month. But then you get to beat groundation. If you have a window in, near, by your room, or maybe you're lucky you have the room right by the back door, your mother and father sleep all the way on the other side of the house. Learn how to pick locks if you don't have a key. Go out. Cause trouble. Then get arrested. This is the American way. By the way, this ain't advice. If I am a role model, please make me a role model of what you don't want to be. Because it might cause you serious damage, psychological, physical, or you wouldn't be able to support me as well with all your spare change. Hmm. It would also be great if when someone brought down coffee they, they could pick up a package of bugler and bring it down for me. That that I would reimburse for. There's many choices of ways to pay. It's nicotine. There there are many payment options, but I am willing to give cash. Although payment options vary from individual to individual. Yes. They vary greatly from individual to individual.
Well, good morning, Tucson. It's getting to be long past that time to wake up, chug black tar that you try to call coffee, even though you're not really sure yourself if it is when your spoon stands up straight. Chain smoke and have a real American underachiever breakfast. Maybe if you're lucky, lung cancer will kill you early. It's better than suicide. It may not be natural causes, but it is better than suicide. Because then you can live with yourself in the afterlife. Instead of sitting and wondering, why did I kill myself there? Why don't I kill myself here? What would be the point? Why don't I go on and die and maybe progress to something better? Maybe a feline, a cat, a truly independent creature. That, that's what I'd like to be in my next life. I'd like to be a cat. Smart, manipulative, vicious, and people would have an irresistible urge to feed me and give me catnip. As long as I've got that goddamn catnip, I'll be happy as a puppy with two Peters. I wish I could get the same effect from catnip that cats do. Give them a pinch of it. And about two minutes with it, And you're going to wonder if your cat hasn't been dipping into your stash. Go check, make sure he didn't munch a couple buds. Cats are lucky. If I have any choice, I'll have to be a cat. Well, cats are still in media too. all the uh, kitty posters and then some obscure science fiction movie I watched a couple weeks ago with a trained attack cat or a really really old movie I'm not sure if it was a Disney movie but I saw it on the Disney Channel the cat from outer space and that was a good one cat had to teach some poor supposed scientific expert how to fix his spaceship. And I thought it was really odd the way he did it. And I, I think what he did was he laced this collar. And it was all just kind of a hallucination. But what was laced on the collar had sort of a program to the chemicals or some such. And the cat wound up trading information for spaceship repair. And I'm not sure if that cat ever made it home. I don't remember watching the end of the movie. And if I didn't, I should finish it sometime. But it's definitely a movie for anyone who's into anything really cheesy, really odd, or, let's see, how, how would you describe it? Cheese nostalgia. One, one of those old science fiction movies. You can see the strings picking up the floating objects. that effect. That's cool. Only it kind of scares me. There's two of you. No, there's two of me. I have reproduced. No, this is not a special effect. 
just like just like a common living cell inside your brain I have made two nucleuses within myself and I have broken apart and I will continue to do so and I will infect this whole country if I have to but I don't have to as long as I get coffee I won't have to Help me keep my dual personalities under control. Bring me coffee. This is the only way you can save the day. Otherwise, I'll start multiplying faster than rabbits. <laughs> and there will be a plague. A plague of disease, alcoholism, and vomit across the nation. It'll be bigger than Waco. The Oklahoma bombings. Hell, it'll be bigger than the OJ trial. But if you bring me coffee now, you can feel assured that you have done your part to save the earth. This is your way to make up for forgetting Earth Day. Save the planet. Bring me coffee. The more I obsess about coffee, the more bitter it sounds. The more I feel I'm going to go into spastic convulsions and wake up lying on the ground or maybe in a hospital bed mumbling about five different subjects at once but bringing coffee into every one of them. That would be disastrous indeed. In fact, not only do I need coffee, my brother Roach needs coffee. And then again, you can't tell looking at him, can you? Oh my gosh, he looked up. He got his head up. Looks almost asleep, doesn't he? Yes. Now this is entertainment. You can watch someone and not know whether they're awake or asleep until they move. And for what? Just for kicks. Just for the, Just hell, of for the hell of it. Hmm. What happened? What? What's that effect called? That that makes it look like there's smoke oh, and such yeah. coming out of your head. That's the feedback? Okay. You see some feedback? Mm. I remember the only time I've seen that one was that night that I brought my roommate here, and that really crusty hippie guy who did the imitation of a radio changing stations and then laughed just obnoxiously where I'm sure people for five miles around heard. Or were you here that way? And now life looks normal again. A little unfocused, a little unclear. Shall we have a sing-along appropriate for the children now? I don't know. Mm. I love you. You love me. We chased Barney up a tree. Hit him with a stick and then he hit the floor. No more purple dinosaur.
Hmm. Then this could be the anti Barney Foundation. And that's it. Why wake up to Barney when you can wake up, look at two people you've never met before in your life, probably never want to, and wonder whether or not one's sleeping or just a vegetable? Both. What could be more exciting than that? I'd say it beats Barney any day. I don't know, for some reason I guess maybe a big purple dinosaur having to bake his own birthday cake, being used by all the kids he thinks are his friends because they want cake, just to watch some poor dinosaur's delusional fantasies. Hell, this poor guy don't even know that dinosaurs are extinct. And he's got problems. He's going to find out soon enough, though. But how entertaining can that be? The only thing I wonder is, where, where are the lost episodes we're going to see in several years? You know, the, the special mail, mail order, lost episodes of Barney. Barney and Betty Bop, get busy. Barney and Betty Bop make the ugliest little dinosaurs you've ever seen, but you think they're cute because they're babies. It's really sad when you can see all these things in the possible future. Although one thing could save the day, and only one thing. What's that? Coffee? Coffee. Coffee. If you're religious, plug your ears for about 15 seconds. If you're not religious, I want you to understand that coffee is God. We need coffee. Yes. If you share God with us, we will share heaven with you. We will make you your own little driveway just on the other side of the pearly gates. Give you a nice beachfront condo. It's really a shame there aren't any beaches in heaven, isn't there? Yep. Or if you're looking for more immediate pleasure, we could pretend to love you for the rest of our lives. I'd have to say last night was an interesting accomplishment. Yes. There was a big group of chaotic people here. Yet. Yeah. It looks like maybe one bum slept out here and made the whole mess of the alley. Cleanest audience I've seen anywhere in a while. It's really a shame they didn't drop quarters everywhere. Foolish. If you have coffee, spare change for coffee, spare change for alcohol, or spare change just for change. What whatever I spend your change on, I promise, will change my day. It will change the course of my day. Because no matter what I get, I will have purchased something that I did not have before. And your change would have made it possible. I might get hungry today. I've eaten like a pig all week, but I still might get hungry today. Or if anyone would like to adopt me on weekends, I could also pretend to love you. I only have one requirement. I'm not too picky. 
you must have a coffee pot and at least one ashtray. That's not too much to ask. Coffee pot, you can scrounge a working coffee maker out of the dump. All it takes is about 20 minutes of looking. Ooh, that, that's a pretty nifty view there. Got the street light. I'd say overall I'm still kind of gleaming with satisfaction of how last night's show turned out. You know damn well it was a good show when the street sweeper wasn't one of the highlights of the show. Too many other things just all happening at once. Conversations in the background. That Random conversations. A couple sets of people talking with each other. A couple other people talking. Yeah, people were communicating. Then there were a couple other people who were talking to no one in particular. I'm not sure who they thought was listening to them, but they were still talking. I guess it's one of those imaginary friend things that I haven't understood since my imaginary dog got run over when I was in fifth grade. This evening, and the and I've first still never really gotten over that. that present this evening is the traditional I, I'm sure I can do it. I'll get through with coffee. Yeah. Donuts with coffee. Uh, then, then I'd have an overwhelming urge to put on a really tight compressed tinfoil badge of blue uniform and go kick people's ass because they stood on a street corner waiting for the light to change too long. You might mention we're looking for this as an access. Miss Instant Access. A contest. How, how is the contest going to be judged? Uh, raising of hands by the people that are here. Hmm. Uh -huh. what, what are the categories going to be? Oh, uh, just who they think represents uh, Instant Access. And no wet t-shirt contest? Well, I guess that'll kind of depend on the temperature outside, too. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe a leather-clad dominatrix. That, that, that would spice things up. Alright, I'd have a bad habit throughout the evening before the end of the contest of trying to, like, drag her off. And the greatest thing would be is if I actually succeeded in dragging her off. First I could be the caveman, then I could be dominated by a woman who wants nothing more than good, no-strings-attached sex. For those of you who are buried, married, good, no-strings-attached sex is some of the best you might have ever had in your life. You don't know what you've missed out on. Sometimes although, at the same time. congratulations, Molly. And although They're it may be birthday. good, a lot of fun to dance to. And it may set you in a better mood. I I would still advise, as far as women go, blow them off and jack off. It's a lot safer that way. If you've caught a disease from an open cut in your hand. You have no one else to be pissed at about it. And no one else has to know if you're the type of person that likes to keep things really private. 
And there's an advantage. If you have a good imagination, masturbation could be your best friend. You can imagine any woman, any shape, any size, any color, any outfit. You could dream up some exotic woman from another planet that no one could ever conceive. Just really whatever floats your Twinkie. But she doesn't have to talk back. She doesn't have to do anything but what you fantasize her doing. Now when you're standing over the sink with Irish soap in your hand and a big mess dripping off of the knees of your pants, it's not as great, but it's a very graceful moment. It's a very special private moment that you should take the time to share with yourself. It's probably the safest sex there ever is or ever will be. Hmm. I wonder how much those apartments cost right there. I don't know. Let's see, what are they? Are they aren't they like Martin Luther King something or other apartment complex? Well, I've got low income. No income? Oh, well, I have low income. I actually do have a job. I can't afford to actually look like I have a job, but I do have a job. As meaningless and minute as it is. It doesn't pay rent, but I know I can rest assured when I absolutely need nicotine, I need coffee, or I need beer, I will have it. Although, I, I, I've had doubts. Do you think they'd let us use the payphone? What's the number for the payphone? Yeah. Well, we think this is the right number. If you want to give me advice, if you want to give me advice, tell me off, or agree with me, Steal the show. If, if you've got an idea worth listening to, I'll listen to it. What was that number again? 791-0055. We're pretty sure this is the right number. It's worth your effort to call. Hmm. How long have been extensions on this one? Right here. Oh, okay. Hello? Test, 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 testosterone? I don't have turned up yet.
Test, test. Test. Testosterone testicle. Okay. Advice for syphilis. Or opinions. Do you think masturbation is safer? Better than real sex? Do you think I'm sick for masturbating? Are you of the opinion that God will make me go blind because I enjoy practicing self-love? That's okay, you'll still be able to find a star. If I don't agree with you, that's okay. I'm lacking for material, so I need your help. The number to call is 791-0055. It's now confirmed. Hello? Hello, you're on the air. Yep, we're kind of running low on subject material, so... Right on, what's your name? Marty? Right on. Hmm? Oh, well, right now, doing the show, it's me and my brother Robert, and then we've got our special effects man behind the camera. Right on. Yeah, well, it's a subject most people don't want to talk about. I figure it's worth talking about. I, I, I believe personally it is the safest sex. I mean, I, I, I find the chances of catching a disease from my hand or getting my hand pregnant are a lot less than if I go to a party and wake up with no clothes on in a strange place next to some behemoth that I don't know. I, I guess maybe it's those kind of experiences that change your life. Yeah. Makes you wiser. Eh, well, wiser, more careful. Hmm. Wow, I'm actually surprised someone called. I was about ready to give up and think I was just standing here kind of amusing myself. All right, on. You take it easy, man. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Shit. How the fuck am I handling a TV show? Oh, we got another one. Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Not a whole lot. Who's this? Martine? How are you doing this morning? Ginger! How are you? <laughs> Gee, I, I, I thought, e even though you're on all that intensive parole sh stuff, I, I, I figured you weren't gonna be one of the people that I would expect to get a call from watching public access. <laughs> Well, I'm full of surprises. Do you have any coffee at your house? All you have is incense. Oh, instant. Instant coffee's good as long as it has caffeine. Do you have soda? Okay, I, I understand that. I guess it's kind of the stage fright thing. It's okay. I, hold, I don't hold it against you, Ginger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello? Hello? How are you doing this morning? Yeah, I still want coffee. We're all kind of desperate for coffee down here. Oh, wow, that that's good. Oh, wow. Well, I can pay him back for the cigarettes, at least. Hmm. 
Wow, surprising results. Last night on the other show, we wound up having a full alleyway audience, a live alleyway audience that, that was actually part of the show. There were about, oh, there were probably at least at any given time three or four different conversations you could hear. It was chaotic, it was beautiful. Um, well, it's called The New Show. It comes to you courtesy of Pondo Chitlin Productions, content free. And next week is the 100, not the 100, the one year anniversary. I'm gonna have a barbecue and see how many people can round up out this way. Have a, have a, have a big food, cigarette, coffee, whatever. Just have a festival. <laughs> uh, okay. She's, she's smoking a cigarette and drinking coffee. Oh, I feel jealous. How long should it take those people to show up down here? I, I hope they show up soon. Even if I don't really love them, I'll pretend to love them at least. Huh. Oh, well, anyone who shows up, if you can stand behind a camera and not feel bad about it and you can talk into a microphone, you're on TV. TV that's alive. Okay. Can I visit you later and drink your soda? Ooh. Okay. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Reunions with long lost friends on the Anti Barney Show. What, what, what surprises do we have in store next? Hmm. Ah. Could it be no one else is watching? Oh, oh, we got another caller. Hello, you're on air? Okay, that was a good one. We got... Some poor asshole who has nothing better to do with his life than make prank phone calls un under the assumption that he is either Beavis or Butthead. I'm not sure which one. I have trouble telling them apart. They're both kind of equally stupid. Uh, I think I kind of find it sick how I find the show still amusing. And this is a confession. I still find the show amusing even though I had more than enough of going to school with people exactly like that and working with people exactly like that. I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's an obsession. Well, I'm running in circles here in front of Cafe Quebec, dreaming of coffee. From what I've been informed, some people left about two or three minutes ago. Saviors, good Samaritans with coffee and cigarettes. In case you didn't completely comprehend the last phone call before Beavis, or Butthead, or Beavhead, whatever. We just had a reunion with one of my ex-girlfriends, who for God knows what reason, oh, wait, 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 here we go, I'll finish the story in a minute, gotta answer the phone. Yellow, you're on air. You're on air. Um, you're on the air, you're on the mic. Well, Let's see, we could call it the morning show, we could call it the anti-Barney club, we could call it whatever name fits at the moment. 
You, you seem a little confused. This is syphilis. Are, are you trying to call someone's house? Are you trying to call someone's house or are you calling the TV show that's live in the alley? Hmm. Well, I know I didn't page you. I've been running in circles waiting for the phone to ring so that I can have subject matter for this show and maybe circulate some people to come down here downtown right by Cafe Quebec in the alley to bring some coffee. Yeah, to bring some coffee and maybe some cigarettes. I can pay back for cigarettes. Hmm. Uh, where's, where's this hostage situation? I'm interested. Oh, uh, no. Oh, wow. How, how many hostages are there? Why are there hostages? Oh, wow. There's a tank. What about the SWAT team? Oh, wow. Any other paramilitaries? Wow, I, th I think it's going to be worth watching the news tonight. Where, where's this by first and... Um ah. Oh, wow, so that's pretty close to right where we are right now. Wow. So far, we've been getting more of a response than I expected. I was just commenting that I'm kind of impressed with the response we've gotten here. No, I, I think it was probably, we just had a call from some guy who thinks he's either Beavis or he thinks he's Butthead, decided to call up on the phone, and I guess maybe I offended him when I started mentioning that it's kind of hard for me to tell both of them apart. They're both kind of equally stupid, and I don't know why. I mean, I, I hate to admit it, but I do find amusement in the show, even though I've lived and worked and gone to school with enough people like that to have my fill of them. Yep, still doing the show till 8 a.m. Oh, I need coffee badly. Could, could could this be our salvation? Could this be our coffee? Uh, although I hope anyone who is kind enough to bring coffee understands uh, all the propaganda about um, bringing coffee will pave your road to heaven. It, it, it was all a bunch of lies. Then again, I'm sure you've seen enough Jimmy Swagger to figure out what's propaganda for gain and what's not. All right, and who are you people? Oh, you've already driven by? Oh, wow. Ah. Hmm. Uh, um, yeah, I'm getting phone calls and kind of improvising, shall we say, live talk. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. What's your name so I know who to appreciate? Mike. 
All right, Robert, Mike is our salvation. I, I think we need to all give Mike some sort of praise when he gets here. All right, well, I guess I'll let you go. See if we have any other people lonely enough or bored enough to watch. Hmm. Could be this man is our salvation. And I hope also him and his friends are very clear on the fact that um, I am no guru and bringing me coffee is not the equivalent of rubbing Buddha's belly. Hello, you're on the air. Do you have any advice for syphilis? You're watching Instant Access, TV that's alive. Yeah? We're here tonight. Come down and join us if you can make it fast. We're um, here every well, Friday. One of them was Mike. Ten at night till eight in the morning. The one I talked to was Mike. Yeah. Yeah, they said they already drove by once. With this number? I know, they said they already drove by and um, I was standing out here on the patio, which is probably true. But there have been a lot of cars driving by, so... Hmm. Okay, well, I I'm, I'm sorry, I guess maybe I pushed a little too much on the Beavis guy, but... Oh, we, we had a guy who thought he was either Beavis or thought he was Butt had decided to call, laugh for about a total of a second and a half, and then hang up. <laughs> I, I, I actually think it's kind of amusing. Are you waiting for a call? All right. All right. Hmm. Well, gee, we, we seem to be getting... Like, building a regular list of callers now, it looks like. If you enjoy this show, tell him so he'll come back next week. Old friends who I haven't seen in months. Some kind, generous soul. Who is hopefully soon, within minutes, preferably, going to be our salvation with coffee and some cigarettes. Don't forget the donuts. The breakfast of champions. Ooh, was this a ring? Ah, it's ringing again. One ringy dingy. Hello, you're on the air. Do you have any advice for syphilis? And what's your name? Okay, we love you too, Beaver. It's a really talented laugh. <laughs> Hello, is this Beaver again? <laughs> hmm. Well, gee, could we could we maybe get some sort of an idea or a comment this well, time? Well, what do you want me to say? It's kind of, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of subject matter. Well, I don't know what to talk about. Okay, thank you. That that that's example one of the worst case scenario viewers you can have on public call access. Call now, call now, call now. You're a lucky caller. Hmm. Bob, want to make a bet whether or not this is Beaver again? A penny, a penny. Hello, do you have any advice for syphilis? What's this show about? Um, yeah. No, what's this show about? Well, I have no problem with it. I don't engage in gay, lesbian, or bisexual relationships. What's this show about? But I do have a theory about severely homophobic people. The secret word I is believe homophobes picket. are pissed because they can't get laid. I'm, I'm not, shall we say, for or against gay or lesbian sex. Do you but like if to that's watch? that's what someone chooses to do with their life, there's nothing the hell wrong with it. Yeah, everyone finds fun in their own ways. Generally, I don't, 
I don't even find fun in sex. I don't even find fun in sex. So. Well, that, that, well, it, it's safe. And it's, it's a lot more sanity binding. Because then you don't have to worry about, well, gee, my fiance is pregnant. We can't afford to get married with a decent wedding. Blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. Run back and forth with no transportation and no job trying to take care of a pregnant woman taxi who then turns around overdoses on amphetamines has a miscarriage and leaves just for no reason well I, I figure maybe if there's anyone who's like flipping through channels and they're like half awake maybe some of that caught their attention and woke them up May maybe I want a new viewer or at least confused another soul. The secret word is picket. Alright, you take it easy. <laughs> calm out, calm out, calm out. I, I'm really impressed. I, I didn't know how many people watched public access programming. Into the next Hello, you're on the air. Any advice for syphilis? Pick it. The secret word is pick it. Take a couple of shots. Try picking it. Um, well, basically, this is just any topic that comes up. Opinions. People call in, give opinions. Um, right now, I guess the topic of this show would be begging for coffee <laughs> 20 minutes 20 well, minutes actually I'm surprised with the turnout I didn't know so many people actually did pay attention to public access programming people's television I, I've been I've got a call from a friend that I haven't heard from in several months and never expected to be watching public access programming and I guess she sent a couple of her friends out on a mission to bring us coffee. So, so we've got our salvation there. Hmm. So, who? The secret word is picket. Hmm. Well, I, I, I'm trying to at least pretend there's enough of a topic to where it doesn't get to the point where sometimes shows get and the street sweeper is like one of the highlights of the shows because you know you're kind of lagging then. Right on, thanks. You have a good morning. Call wow. now, call now, call now. Oh my God. Hello, you're on the air. Any advice for syphilis? The secret word is picket. The secret word is ticket? Ticket. Picket. Oh, picket. You're um, a winner. No, actually, the secret word down. for today was shit, but you know what? You, you can make your own personal secret word, since that one is admittedly a little vulgar, you can make your own secret word picket. And the beautiful thing about picketing, um, what? Ah, uh, you forgot Pick to jump up and syphilis. down and scream hysterically. But the beautiful thing about picketing is when you pick it, syphilis you can goes pick away. it any place that you want to. You can make a sign to protest a blood bank. You can make a sign to protest coffee Nazis who won't let you sit in their shop long enough to rest your feet. Because you're not buying coffee from them. Instant access. Or you, you could also boycott government organizations. You could boycott the police department. Although I think that even a peaceful picketing would somehow turn out with injuries if you tried to boycott the police department. So, 
I, I don't think they'd be really too fond of that idea. I think they'd have kind of a tendency to come out, at least some of them, under the philosophy. Well, gee, I've got a badge. I've got a uniform. I'm sworn in court. Who's going to care if I kick in this poor little guy's head? Um, no, we're not on radio. We're on TV. Um, okay, do you know where Cafe Quebec is? Are you familiar with Graffiti Alley? We're, we're, we're right set up on the end of Graffiti Alley. Um, oh, it's kind of breezy, and there's someone across the street watering the sidewalk. It doesn't really look too exciting, but we do have like a passerby on the street who actually stopped to talk to us. Yep. To, to add to our overwhelming response here. Um, well, we've got the camera set up just over there in the alley. I know, but who's broadcasting? Who's seeing us? A surprising amount of people. I, I, I've had lots of calls. I had one that was really stupid but kind of amusing to me. And then the rest of them have been actually intelligent people. In fact, I just finished talking to an elderly lady who said we were doing quite a good job here. Um, um, I'm syphilis. Pick it. <laughs> um, no. There, there, there really is a story behind the name. Well. I, I was homeless for quite some time, and while I was dumpster diving for clothes or other knickknacks that I thought might be useful to take somewhere and do something with, I found a t-shirt that just said the word syphilis. I thought, well, hey, this is cool. Maybe I can keep some people away from me, because ge generally I don't like humans too much. Which guy? Oh, yeah, he's the one who was just talking to us. Oh, is this our coffee, our salvation? Um, well, I think this is the little car we've hopefully been waiting for. Oh, yes, coffee. I love these people. Oh, we could talk about... Well, as, as far as aliens go, um, I believe it's possible, but... I, I think it's really, really possible just on planet Earth that we could have extraterrestrial type beings that just no one's ever heard of. J just some of the strange creatures from from under the sea, maybe the lost city of Atlantis or something. Ah, salvation. Yeah, man, you on it. Let me see that thing. I have something to say. Uh, here, we, here we go. We've got a passerby on the street with something to say. Wake up, Paul. Hey, all y'all out there in TV land, you just see me on that nice mountain bike. I'm single looking for a woman. Well, somebody's got to sing the blues. In fact, I'm kind of missing the blues down on 4th. Used to be at least two or three people out there every day. Last couple days I've been out there, I've seen a hippie playing... Um, folklore music. Um, actually living within the city, um, probably if I added up all the time between incarcerations, about three years. Yeah. The mud people? Uh, Weren't those the same guys that used to do the dino drummer thing? They dress up in costumes? Yeah, I, I've seen it before. No, but I got a mic right here so you can talk in this mic mm. and they can see. It's a pull right here. So that's what's going on. That's what people are seeing. Cool. Put me well, on the Oh, yeah. I, well, yeah, you, I have to admit that, seriously. Now, now I think it's really funny, because all of the poor homeless fucking 
crusty gutter punks, whatever they want to be called, if they want to be called anything. With, with this whole new thing of, oh, punk rock, punk rock, I've, I've noticed a big thing with a bunch of jocks and God, God knows what other... Instant access television! ...from the look of them at least get some sort of an allowance each week going out and panhandling because these other guys are and they think it's cool. There we go, looking better every second. Yeah, it is cool going out there panhandling and do what you think, bro. I see some of them looking at it as... We gotta have that goddamn money, man. Look, shit. Check it out, homes. Oh, yeah. You out there, po hungry. Want some to eat? I thought I'd ask for some. Don't steal. Damn. I wouldn't have to spend any of mine. For all you I TV viewers, I think y'all should go out there and pan out and support this TV broadcast. All right. But, like, uh, here's a more serious tip. Uh, I'm just cruising around on a Saturday morning at about 10 All right. 8. Only looking winners. For a beautiful don't use female. Drugs. So I figured oh, I God. seen the TV. My what better way to meet one God, of you? Damn, another one. Bond. How, how, how did this happen? Hello, oh, do you have any call. advice for syphilis? You're on the air. Hey, we ain't got time for that syphilis crap. Um, yeah, they're still here. This dude talking about syphilis? He just saw, talk, talking about in Oh, people start ringing the phone? Okay. Hey, Ginger and Martine want to see you guys on TV. What's the number? 791-0055? Um, all you have to do is walk <laughs> around the corner and there's cameras right there. Hello, here we are. Hey, yeah, you see yeah. that number? 791-0055? I need a female to call me. <laughs> Try not to be too perverted well, or anything, but that would work. Okay? Just call. Is, is there someone else on the camera now? 0055. That's right. You on the couch slug show. <laughs> I'm going oh. to the phone, expecting a call. You know what his stupidity should provide then? Cheap amusement. Che cheap amusement. Oh, it's on. Hey, what time is it? If he's... Uh, you know. Hi? <laughs> oh, wow. I haven't heard Ginger hysterical for a while. <laughs> oh, we got another call coming in? Yes, sir. Oh, god dang, this is an overwhelming response. I think all this picking up of phones is going to kill me by the end of the show. Hmm. Like John and Dan, we'll see ya! <laughs> okay. That one is done with. You're supposed to go visit her later today. Hi, here you got the guns. Ain't nothing, dude. It's partly sunny, real nice out there. Everybody's heading out. I'm the dude on the mountain bike. You remember me? Hey, yeah, well, totally cool, bro. I just had to hang up on that last call. I needed a call coming through on this TV. Now, go knock on some girl's apartment door and say they got a fine brother want to talk to you on the phone. <laughs> just say, wake up, Tucson. How about you? Yeah, I hear you, Holmes. That's pretty neat you out there kicking it on that 64 channel early in the morning. I wonder if they're checking me out right across the street at the broadcast station, but I, I wonder how I sound. How I sound to you over there on TV? There's no way you can do that. Yeah, what? Well, you want to hear me sing some blues for you? Dun, 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 dun. I was on cable TV. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Watching channel 94. Ba -bum, ba -bum. I had to switch. Cause I couldn't see no more. How's that sound to you, buddy? All right, we got to wait for another call. We only got exactly about seven more minutes. So like they say, we'll see ya. All right, the phones still need to be rung. So how about all you people? There we go. We got another caller on the air. Go ahead, caller. Hey, now we're talking. We got a female. What's up there, lady? Can somebody bring some coffee? Or what you say? Oh, well, it's just some free air time we got going here. Everybody just walking around, produce whatever they want. And in my situation, I just happen to be cruising by on my mountain bike every morning. And I say, hey, what a better way to get on the tube. So what are you going to do this beautiful day, lady? 
gosh, I, I found the secret word is kicking. <laughs> You're not going to go to the Reed Park car show? Well, you got a lovely voice. Is there a chance to meet you out there? Straight? Yes, you know. All right. Now you're talking and... Nope. I'm big 30 whopping 33. It doesn't matter as long as it's clean and safe. Now, I'm very physical, ex-Navy, love swimming, love the water, all that kind of crap. So I tell you what you do. You bring your friend down to the show the next Friday night and we start on the air at 10 we're right here at exactly what's the address on this show location we need a location it's one end of graffiti alley by the cafe Quebec 124 what's that street right there are we on 4th Avenue we're right on the other side of the Ronstadt in the alley and we're so cool, we got t I'm satellite just set up right in the alley for all you viewers. We got exactly another seven minutes on the air, so um, come back at 10. Next Friday, we'll be there. We'll see ya! I just hung up on a break, man. Watch the ball race. All right, car. We just got off the line with another beautiful woman. I'm going to turn that show back on to these guys. Hold on, dude. Don't touch that phone. We got women calling. We got everybody calling. Why? Hello, you're on the air. Oh, well, I appreciate the commentary. What'd they say, jackass or something? Oh, they told me I'm an idiot. <laughs> what the hell? Hate mail is better than no mail. Hello, you're on the air. Any advice for syphilis? Um, he just rode off, or is he in front of the camera again? Um, oh, here he is. He's back. He's back. Here he is. Yes, hello. Hi. All right, now, I like this voice, you guys. Hey, what's up? Nothing, just kicking it on the air, riding around on the mountain bike? What are you doing? <laughs> this ain't one of them phone sex things, is it? <laughs> cool, you sound sweet anyway. Are you going to the car show today? What do you have plans for today? Really? And are you married? Really? You sound sad. Why? Huh? I'm listening. Oh, you're tired from working? What do you do? Yeah, Are you a police officer? Well, you gotta clue me in a little more. What do you mean by that lovely lady? You gotta go? Well, we'll see ya! All right, Carl, we got a little crying on the air. I don't know what the problem is, but she'll be all right on the night shift patrol. Here's the phone again. Hello, you on the air? Whatever, jerk. All right, we had one of them little geeky freak jerks on the air. He wanted to talk and say, oh, fuck off. Oh. Wayne's World, we got another caller. Go ahead. What do you want? All right, dude, you just hang on tough, all right? See ya. All right, we got a quest for Chris. I'm sitting over here on the mic. The phone ringing off. Hello. Well, see ya. Chris, you're wanted. The phone need to ring. Hey, Chris, you're wanted on the uh, phone, ain't? Two minutes, and I still wish that phone to ring right after we get off the air. Someone come get this mic, man. I'm tired of Mac Daddy. 
All right, we got two minutes left and we got another call. Oh, wow, was that our Beavis caller again? Beavis, I, I just want you to know we all love you. Jesus loves you. And, well, you're actually kind of annoying. Hey, this is to that woman who was crying from Hello, the Hello, you're live on the air. Don't yeah? sweat that. I'll be here yeah, next Chris. Friday. Maybe I'll meet a nice single, preferably blonde. Hello? What do you want? You're on the air. <laughs> I know. What? Go talk, I can't. I am. You can't. This is pretty interesting. I think I'm gonna have to put together some fucking music for next week or something. Enough to take well, off. Well, bye. Oh, so you just... It has to be Tweaker Television. And G Ginger seems to be becoming a regular here. It's okay, we love her. Hello, you're live on the air. Any advice for syphilis? Um, well, syphilis is my nickname, but if you haven't, like, had to suffer through any of the sex education classes, it's also a sexually transmitted disease. I, there, there is a good story how I earned the name, and unfortunately it doesn't d involve catching the disease. And I figured may maybe by now my brain would have rotted away, but how are you doing this morning? Are you enjoying the show? Um, yeah. I'm not any glorious...